I'd like to take a little bit of time today to talk about three season backpacking footwear, specifically trail runners. Most of what I've learned has come from a book by a guy named Andrew Skirka, a world famous backpacker. This is just my little extra tips and tricks on top of that. So what is a trail runner? A trail runner is a running shoe with a few extra features, such as a more aggressive tread pattern, a front toe bumper to prevent hitting rocks and brutes, and some of them have a rock plate in the middle, which is a piece of nylon to prevent stone bruising. Also, uh, there's various types of upper meshes. Some are designed specifically to keep debris, sand, dirt, that kind of stuff out. So why would you want to use a trail runner? The main reason you want to use a trail runner over a traditional backpacking boot is the weight. The weight savings is huge. A traditional backpacking boot might be two and a half, three pounds. Uh, a trail running shoe might be one pound. So over the course of the day, that's going to lead to a lot less wear and tear in your joints, and it's going to lead to uh, a lot better, more refreshed feeling when you get to camp at night. The other two thing is, I would argue that no matter where you are, your feet are going to get wet while you're outside. If it's raining, no matter how wet Gore-Tex your boot is, it's, it's going to get wet. Uh, and the great thing about the trail runner is it kind of squeegees the water out, allows the foot to just be damp instead of wet. There's a difference between damp and wet. Um, the final thing it does is it allows the ankle to do what it's supposed to do. Your ankle is not supposed to be in a rigid calf, it's supposed to move around. That's the way we were designed. So with that said, I get some common objectives and there are a few drawbacks with using trail runner. Probably the most common thing is people think they need ankle support, which as I said, foot moves around, it shouldn't be locked in place. If you feel your ankles are weak, there's some exercises that I'll talk about that can strengthen them. Uh, the other thing I would stress is you do not need a waterproof boot. With a Gore-Tex boot, the problem with that is, is once water gets in it, it does not want to go away. So instead of being in a damp environment, you're squishing on water, which in my opinion ruins your feet very quickly. Um, it also creates almost like a humid effect in the shoe um, when the when the outer membrane of the Gore-Tex boot is soaked, it, the water can't escape. It creates a moist, humid environment where it doesn't with the trail runner. The two drawbacks I would say with the trail runner are the durability. Your average shoe is going to last anywhere from three to 500 miles, maybe more, whereas your backpacking boot is probably 800 to 1200 miles of last. Um, however, you can get trail runner shoes for anywhere from 85 to maybe $100 for a decent pair, maybe a little bit more. Your backpacking boot is going to be two to three times that for like a good quality backpacking boot. So I would say in the end that even though you got to replace it more often, the cost is about equal, give or take. And you could argue either way. Um, the few times you would never want to use a trail running shoe is in a deep winter. Uh, some people use them with over boots, which I suppose is okay. But if it's really cold, I would recommend you know cold weather foot footwear. Um, Mountaineering, the, uh, there's not much uh, you know, ankle support and or stiffness to try to use crampons or anything like that, so that's when you need a mountaineering boot. And if you're doing heavy or you're doing like work outside, I would not recommend it. Uh, it loads over 50 pounds with trail runners, and it really, I don't feel, offers the support and your foot's really getting smashed down. Um, to help with the ankle support uh, issue, I've got, I came up with a few different exercises, I've, you know, borrowed from personal trainer friends. Um, there's a thing called a TheraBand, which is like a rubber band, stretchy thing. And the nice thing you can do with it is uh, you can wrap around the end of your foot and you can flex your foot this way. You can hold it to the side, do this way, pull it back. So you can really work on your flexibility, range of motion, and strength. Uh, other things that help are obviously calf raises. You do those. Um, some uh, physical therapy places and gyms have something called a BAPS board, which is like a blue circular disc that you screw things into the bottom in order to raise its height and then you can maneuver your foot around like this. That really builds up ankle uh, mobility and strength. Uh, another thing that works out well is using something called a BOSU ball. Uh, it's like one of those big exercise balls cut in half with a plastic base and then you can walk on top of it, do squats on top of it. It really allows the ankle to move around. So those are a few things I've done in order to kind of strengthen my ankles and work on flexibility so I don't have any kind of injury. Uh, now let's take a look at a few of the trail runners I've used in the past and I'll share you my thoughts with those. Here's the first trail running shoe I bought. It's the Solomon XA Pro. It's a great shoe. I've now had it for about four years. I use it kind of as my around town shoe now. Um, the upper is great, super durable, no problems there. Good toe bumper. The lacing system works well. It's uh, Solomon's proprietary system. It laces up, it stays nice and tight. I uh, like it a lot, it's a good shoe. 
The only problem with this one is when I was using this outside, I wore the track the tread down really quick, um, and it, it's completely smooth basically now. And I, I just wish the tread pattern was a little bit more aggressive. Other than that, the upper is is exactly what you need, bomb proof. Um, now after four years, it's finally starting to get some splits and cracks, but that's expected. So after I wore this shoe out, I bought this shoe. This is pretty inexpensive. I only got this for like seventy dollars. It's the Montreal or Montreal Baja. The good thing about this is it's like, super light. It's it's lighter than that XA Pro. It's really super lightweight. It has normal laces, which they worked fine. Uh, it's got a good heel cup, like real solid. My foot never slipped in this shoe. And the best thing about it is this grip. The grip on this thing is is phenomenal. No problems. Wet rocks, sand, whatever. It works great. Mud. Um, it seems to have worn okay. I only probably have about 150 miles on this shoe, um, but the, the tread's wearing pretty good. The there's two. The, the major problem with this is the mesh. There's two problems with the mesh. One, it's super breathable, which you think would be good, but the problem is it's so breathable that it gets dirt in real easy. If you're in a sandy or dirty environment, you get sand, dirt, all caked up in your foot, and it's not good. You, you got to clean your shoe out all the time. The other thing that's terrible with the mesh is its durability. Within like 10 miles of wearing this, I started to develop a hole right here, which I put some polyurethane glue on. It seemed to help. Um, but what happened is I was going down a, a quite a, a slope. I was on a scree field, and um, I, <laughs> I blew out the side. And this is 150 miles into the shoe, and it already has a hole in the side, which basically, in my opinion, makes it useless because now i got dirt and rocks and all kinds of other stuff going in my shoe. And there's, severe, there's another hole there. There's another hole here. Um, so other than, than the mesh being absolutely terrible, this is like the perfect shoe. If they would just fix the mesh, we'd be the ultimate trail runner in my opinion. So to replace that, I, I, I have to gain a little bit to something more durable. This is the Solomon X Ultra. It's from their hiking collection. Um, it's very similar to the XA Pro, but it's got a lot more aggressive tread pattern. Uh, this like chevron pattern worked really good. I took it out of the box, walked up and down my street once or twice, and then I took it on like a 35, 40 mile trip and no problems at all. Great uh, traction, good stability. Uh, the uppers made it this like synthetic meshy stuff that actually dried pretty good. The mesh itself that Salmon uses is a lot more durable than that Montreal. Um, my feet stayed good and clean. I didn't get dirt coming in. It's got this super strong uh, bumper here in the front. If you hit a root or a rock, you're gonna hurt the tree. Um, the lacing system's the same. Salmon always uses, seems to work fine. The only problem with this shoe is I find that the uh, the heel pocket here isn't quite as in as what I, I wish. I, a little bit of heel slippage, but other than that, this is a really good shoe. I like it quite a bit. It's uh, it's about the same weight, I'd say, as the XA Pro, so real good. Uh, next, I'm going to talk a little bit about foot care and how to prevent blisters. In order to keep your feet working, you have to do three things. You have to keep them clean, warm, and dry. To keep them clean, I use a gaiter. Um, around the top of the ankle of the shoe, it's low cut, so you're going to get dirt and stuff in it. Uh, this gator is called the Simply Bliss Levia Gator. It's made of this super stretchy material. It's got Velcro and a little uh, lace hook. It goes around the top of your ankle, uh, fits securely, and it really prevents uh, getting dirt and debris in your shoe. It's the little pieces of dirt that'll rub on the bottom of your foot and create the blister. So that keeps them clean. I also, at the end of the night, I always try to wipe down my feet, get rid of any dirt uh, before putting a new clean pair of socks on. So that's how you keep your feet clean. Uh, in order to keep them warm, you need socks. Uh, and most of the time, people would use something like this. This is a smart wool, uh, medium weight hiking sock. The only problem with this is it really retains the water. Uh, and I don't think the extra cushioning and padding is really needed, at least for me. If this gets wet, it does take quite a while to dry out by the campfire or dry hanging. It's going to take forever. So instead, yet another thing from the Andrew Skirka playbook, as I use these feet, they're called the Defeat Woolenator socks. Um, they are great. They're cycling socks. They're real thin. Uh, these get wet. They dry out within a few hours real fast. Uh, I usually have to use a three sock system. So I have two socks that I'll rotate throughout the day. Um, so usually at lunchtime I'll, I'll clean them, put them on the outside of my pack to dry. And then I keep a third set that's always dry in my dry bag um, that I can put on at night so I always know at least my feet will be dry and warm at night. Uh, so in order to, to keep your foot dry, or at least your foot's going to get wet, in order to keep it from dealing with the wetness, uh, deal with that super pruniness, I use this stuff, uh, once again turned on by Andrew Skirka, called Bonnie's Balm. It's a wax-based uh, balm. 
that uh, when you rub it into your skin, uh, it, it uh, kind of waterproofs it and prevents um, your foot from getting too saturated. I uh, usually like a day or two before I start a big trip, I'll start applying and putting it on, let it really soak in. And then every night uh, I put some on as I, when I change to my dry socks. So it really helps with that, uh, prevents blisters. I did 40 miles last weekend and no, no blisters. So uh, I think this is definitely a critical part. Also, it works great at getting rid of calluses. Um, instead of carrying that big old jug around, I have this little tiny container here. This holds about seven to 10 days worth of stuff. Um, so it's good just put it in that little container. If you're going to be around camp a lot, um, I have two things that I do. Uh, on a canoe trip, where I'll probably be around camp a whole lot more than I will a backpacking trip, because backpacking, when I roll in at night, fall asleep pretty quickly. Uh, on a canoe trip, I, I sometimes I carry these. Of course, I forgot on my last trip, and I feel like an idiot. But these are really good. These are Merrill barefoot shoes. They're also my gym shoes. But as you can see, unlike a pair of Crocs, they compress down to like a half an inch. Um, so they're real thin. But they got decent enough traction, you can wear them around camp, no problem at all. And something new I started doing is I uh, had a little bit of an expenditure. Um, I bought these dry socks. Uh, yes, there are cheaper alternatives, but I'm a big fanboy of Arteryx. So I bought their uh, Maddox dry socks. They look kind of like a, a giant Christmas socking. But it's a Gore-Tex three-layer um, Pro Shell, super nice dry sock. And so what I, I did with this on my last backpacking trip is dried my foot out, lubed them up with the Bonnie's Balm, put my warm sock on, put these on, and even though my, my trail runners were completely soaked, I could walk around camp, keep my feet nice and warm and dry. Um, what I'm going to do is next canoe trip is bring those Merrill Barefoot shoes, uh, a warm pair of socks and these, and then that way I have a completely nice warm uh, system for around camp. Uh, these two socks together weigh like four ounces. So uh, for backpacking, you don't have to carry an extra uh, set of camp shoes. You have basically four ounce camp shoes, which is pretty lightweight. Keep your feet nice, warm, and dry. So I hope with all that said, that helps someone out there. Uh, like I said, I'd highly recommend reading uh, Andrew Skirka's book. Uh, that's where I got a lot of this information from. Kind of added some of my own things to it. Uh, hope you enjoy the video.